welcome and thanks for joining us on Off the Press this morning, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and make sense of it, the newspaper review if you like. And with me to do so this morning is a political analyst, uh, Ajidahun Akinpelu. <laughs> Good to have you. Welcome. And of course, Ifi Oji, who is policy analyst also. Okay, it's good to see you again. Good to see you again. It looks like it's been ages we've not seen ourselves. <laughs> okay, yes, we'll have a reunion <laughs> indeed. Okay, so we have so many papers here this morning, uh, but we'd like to begin with the Nation newspaper. It will be displayed now. We have the Nation, we have Guardian, The Punch, and I believe Vanguard. Yeah. So let's begin, start off with the Nation newspaper. And it says, 43 uh, billion naira stamp duty cash in CBN, says federal government. And the Federal Executive Council okays 40 billion naira for roads. That story is on page 8, already displayed. Thank you very much there on your screens. And then government begins probe of Shaware and DSS incident. That story also is on page 8. Who leads uh, post-Brexit Britain? UK poll holds today. And that's on page nine. I believe it started already, 7 a.m. local time. And Kogi Bell suppose we sent 62,200 policemen, says IG, I neck decries insecurity. That story is on the front page there, as you can see, but it's continued uh, on page 41. Now, Delta House passes governor's pension bills on page 41. The front page continued on, on page 41. First lady accuses president's aid of disloyalty. That story is on page 8. And then Asu plans strike on page 42. Christmas mood, there's a picture story there. Uh, wife of Oshun State Governor, uh, Mrs. Kafayat, surrounded by children during an end of year party at the government's house in Oshobo yesterday. Good one. And then the big story is a strike. Electricity workers target transmission stations. Union members picket power ministry. Reps summons minister and Pencom boss. That's the front page. But it is continued, as you can see, on page 41, or as I can tell you, rather, because you can see it. And then Senate 6, uh, 2.1 trillion naira for constituency projects. It's on page 6. And if EFCC rearranges Ikuforji, on page six. Okay. Where do we begin this morning? If you can see, you're looking at me with this corner eye. Which one is it? Okay, so where do we start this morning? Um, electricity strike, Ify? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, up, it's no uh, secret that there have been a lot of challenges uh, with uh, the Nigerian sector mm. um, on, on power, on power sector. Power sector, exactly. And um, I started off earlier on in the year with uh, the Section 74 um, enforcement, mm -hmm. showing that um, giving, uh, reminding the uh, Gencos and the trans and the trans and, tra and the, d the discos rather, mm. that uh, the federal government could could lower the axe on them, should they be found defaulting in the, what all their promises that were made at the beginning of the unbundling process, and again, we, again, we found we found themselves in a, in a tight position with the the actual um, employee employees mm -hmm. of these uh, discos and all, and including the uh, Gencos as well, and they have through their union the NUEE they have issued a 21 day uh, ultimatum. yeah ultimatum on uh, you know being paid uh, 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 accruals or what they have been owed in the last uh, couple of years. I mean, going as far back as before the unbundling process, 2013. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously um, a, a, an issue that has been inherited mm. by um, all of the new the new age discos and uh, the generation Genko, Genko as well. So they, you can see that right now they are in a very tight spot because they're both getting the pressure from above and below, for lack mm. of a better word. And ultimately, I hope this does not affect the average uh, utility uh, payer, pay, um, sorry, the utility consumer. Yeah, because again, it's not even a good time. Let's even put it in context. It's festive season, it's Christmas. If they down their tools as they are threatening, or you know, it means that we may have issues of electricity. Simply put, we should get uh, our fields. Everybody get your kegs and start. Um, putting your fields in, in place. It, it, um, I mean, Amaka, you, you couldn't have said it um, better. As far as I'm concerned, I know that at least four or five discos uh, as of yesterday were shut down. 
I have a um, source, um, uh, an inside source says that some of them were actually not even allowed to go into the offices. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I think they have like a Echo Disco and mm. Keja Disco, and yes. I think Joss and Abuja are affected as well. So out of all of those uh, different uh, companies, there is obviously uh, there's obviously trying they're obviously trying to make those changes as quickly and as mm. as positive as pos as quickly as possible. Mm. So we just have to wait and see what uh, transpires. Apparently, it's a serious case. Yeah. All right, um, you want to? Okay, I would like to add a bit, but I feel like the timing mm -hmm. was very strategic because if they had done it at any other time, they would have probably not had as much of an effect. But because of the need for electricity in this Christmas mm -hmm. period. So they are they so are they think they're being they're intentional. De is definitely, definitely, de definitely deliberate, deliberate in terms definitely. of the timing. Exactly, because I, I'm not so sure about the certainty of my source, but I, d I heard recently on the radio that the strike has actually been called off this morning, mm. but that is yet to be, okay, yet to be unfolded. But oh, okay. the, the timing was very strategic, and mm. so like they'll definitely get results. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. All right, can we move on to any other story? <coughs> Here, excuse me. Um, First Lady accuses President's aid of disloyalty as to plan strike, Delta passes bills, uh, Brexit, governance, be, government begins probe on Shores incident. Any of the story catching your the, attention this morning? The First Lady accuses. Really, yeah, the first, that, that case really caught my attention because Why? it's almost like tradition now for the position of the First Lady to be a thing. Mm. And for them to suddenly in this um, governance, decide to scrap it off. Mm -hmm. Must have definitely taken our back. Like, what's going on here? Like, mm -hmm. because there is—it's not necessarily a law, but it's become a custom mm -hmm. that has entrenched Im itself as a law, basically. And so I feel she felt very aggrieved by that. And for the fact that it was coming from someone so close, mm -hmm. to she must have definitely there was a sense of betrayal was there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the the manner in which they went about it by disregarding that interview and all of these things, they're definitely, from the other party, they would have had their reasons, but from the standpoint of the nation, mm -hmm. women, for example, they need that first lady position. In a, in a it, sense, it, when I say women. need, it's, it's a... Is it just women? No, no, no. You think okay. it's a position that should be recognized? It, that's what, because like, it's, it's a position that women kind of can really, um, Connect to? Connect to in the sense that, you know, it's not just men mm. making all the decisions. Okay. That there's a woman who cares for women out there doing, you know, making, it's the same way with Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. where she was making a lot of um, speeches and mm -hmm. a lot of like um, act, um, active um, movement, yeah, yeah. In, in, in different that things, exactly. And I, so, I don't know if I necessarily agree. Sorry, it's <laughs> just okay, because I have a very strong opinion, especially around mm -hmm. okay. uh, women. And in you know, there's it, there's been a lot of she's having. There's been a lot of conversation. She's been coming out. Back so, and forth. What, what what it clearly shows is that there needs to be more sort of uh, representation. Of women, not in, not in, like, well, uh, first yeah, that's, not, that's no, exactly no, 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 not in, not in, no, not in first lady positions. Okay. Or, there needs to be a seat apportioned to them on the table. There needs to be a seat on the table, not, not a, uh, you know, just you're just giving them a seat just because they are the first lady. Mm. And they, no, a proper or just seat because of we want decision to, making. We want on to the table. pacify you. It is mm. almost, it is almost unheard of that we only have like one or two uh, governors that have been women. Mm -hmm. In the last thirty years, it's it's almost, and I don't, I, don't I can't think imagine. I've ever seen one. There, there, we had, a, I know we had a Tiaba, and she was only there for a very short period. Mm -hmm. They made Tiaba, I think, of Anambra State, mm -hmm. and it's, so so this idea of okay, the first lady role and giving it like a, making it as a placeholder position, I don't think it's it's it suffice. I'm sorry to say, mm -hmm. I feel like if they're given more seats on the actual table and decision making positions, then. Some of these um, the ladies that are out there will actually have an uh, avenue to run for these offices and make key decisions, not because they are first ladies, mm -hmm. because they are actual bona fide uh, uh, lead leaders. And within. because they are competent. And they are com of course they are competent. And, and <laughs> I mean, what it uh, says. <laughs> of, all, of all the times they always laugh at her, she always says things that actually ring true. Mm. You know, even though it's always shrouded in shame or stigma or whatever. She, at the end of the day, if you go back to any kind of comment that she's made, even if they seem like, funny, 
this, it's obvious that there, if there are more positions and outlets for women to make these run for office and make these key decisions, we won't be having all these uh, outbursts as, mm -hmm. as often as we see I them. think somehow you have also affirmed uh, what uh, Ajidam was trying to say there. Okay, okay so um, is there any other story that is catching anyone's attention here? Uh, the Shore, uh, government begins yeah. probe of Shore, in case you, you want to say something on that. I would, I would rather you not rather, I'd rather not get oh, okay. involved with that. Okay, so if we, um, I know there's one that you're quite interested in. Let's, yeah. let's come to the Guardian yes, <laughs> newspaper. Uh, the crackdown in presidency as Aisha Buhari lashes out. That's basically what we've just talked about, right? Yeah. Uh, Senate moves for compulsory payment of unemployed graduates. That story is on page three. E-voting long overdue, Ainek Cheyakubu insists on page three also of the Guardian newspaper already displayed there. Mm. And stepfather, six others allegedly gang rape, infect minor mm. with HIV in Yobe. What sort of story is this? It's on page 12. And then no state government can alter minimum wage law. Federal government declares why negotiation at state level is delayed by NLC. That's on the front page also. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, but it's continued on page six. Now, where do we, where do we be? Any story you want to interview? The state of the Senate move for the unemployment rate. Compulsory payments of unemployed graduates. Is that going to solve the problem? Well, well, let me allow you to say what you okay. want to say. Before. I wouldn't necessarily say it will solve the problem, but it will definitely push it in the right step. In the sense that Nigeria's current unemployment rate is about 23.1%, mm -hmm. and that's, right higher, high, that's higher than the rate it was last year, which was 18, mm -hmm. I think, 18.3. And that's, that, that shows the failure of both the public sector and the private sector, in the mm -hmm. sense that it's almost like, what's the point of all the academic stress in university pushing yourself to get a 2-1, a first class, only to come out and spend five, six years with no Jobless. job opportunity. It's almost like, even for the, from the perspective of the parents, it's like, why did I even bother paying mm. all this money? But like, this is definitely gonna push it in the right step in the sense that there is now more of like a motivation when you come out of university knowing that you would, there is something for you mm -hmm. to, to contribute to the GDP of the country. And moving further, that's even going to increase the GDP of the country at the mm -hmm. same time. And it will also improve the sector because we know that Nigerians are very smart people. The True. only problem is that there is not enough opportunities for them to really show this genius. Mm -hmm. I mean, recently there was, a, at the, I think, a car show in Abuja where a, there's a new um, Nigerian luxury car maker. Mm -hmm. And he just he decided that he saw the, this, the market for luxury cars. It's usually Africans that buy them from Europe. Oh. So he's like, why don't we just make it here? Mm -hmm. And these are the kind of ingenious things that all Nigerians have, but because there is no, the conditions aren't just right for these kind of things, but this is definitely a move in the right direction mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you say you're not in Well, I agree with him. This time I, I actually do agree with uh, him. <laughs> I feel like... Um, <laughs> this time we no, agree. No, no, he's, he's correct. But I, ultimately, I, I, what I will add to this, if I may add to what he's saying mm -hmm. as well, by, tw by 2020, the jump from 23% to 30%, mm. that, that means one in every uh, three young person in Nigeria will it's be unemployed. Honest. That's not So that's good out of the three of us now. One mm. of us will be out of a job. No, mm. not one of no us. No one of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Before yeah. we get to reach our I don't want to be alarmist, but I want us to yeah. take that into Put proper context. context true. Yes, because one, one, one in three, of, three persons that is young will be out of a job. So. You, you and have it's to just, also, it's in 2020, that's next that's year. Next that's next year. That's a couple um, of months. Yeah. So, from, so there's an there's a, a incremental 10% uh, jump of un unemployment rate each year. So it, God knows what it's going to be in 2021 mm. if this isn't taken care of. So I understand the immediacy mm. with which the Senate is actually approaching this issue, mm. wanting to pay uh, uh, the unemployed youth. I don't actually think it's a bad idea because I know right now there's an informal sector that has not been accounted for just because we don't have the data and statistics. Yeah. They got this from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, but they're given clear uh, markers in how to determine what those figures are. Some people right now, they are in between jobs, they are doing contract work. They don't, they don't really know that they're unemployed. Yeah, because they, they don't still, know your fate after they, 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 don't, know, they don't even know that they're unemployed. Elapses. But right now, as it is, because they are not bringing in contributions, they are unemployed. Mm. You know? and, and I also feel like that, that money is also... Right now, if you look at um, go, go on social media, he's right. There's a lot of in, ingenious in Nigeria. The, the go to social media, go to different um, digital platforms. A lot of young people are doing incredible things, yeah. incredible things. So it's just a way of us finding a way to maybe probably aggregate all this, create the creative industry and make sure that these, uh, these um, the workforce is accounted for. Mm. 
mm. in a proper sense. And also find ways and new ways of actually looking for skills that are more adaptable to what we are current uh, situation with them um, in, in the in the economic sector right mm. now. We don't necessarily have um, the kind of the, the typical degrees we're getting back in the day. The medicine, the economics, they're not necessarily what the skills that are going to transform that are going to be transformers in the next decade. So we need to also be, uh, yeah, he mentioned that, okay, we're getting the first class and second class, mm. two yeah. ones and everything. Yes, but there are certain skills and skills gap that are there. That is why yeah. these jobs are not even being, and the jobs may even be there, but they may not just have the right candidates for those jobs. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, If you, especially when you talked about the immediacy. In fact, in the news this morning, uh, the Senate also declared a state of emergency on unemployment in mm. the country. So mm. it shows that, yes, we are aware. Mm. Uh, we are moving fast this morning in the interest of time. Um, I hope you don't mind. So we'll go to the next uh, uh, paper, which is Punch. Punch made the news yesterday. Did anybody notice yeah. with yes. the editorial? Yes, um, yes, the punch. <laughs> Some people say it's Punch throwing punches at the presidency. <laughs> Not me saying. I saw it somewhere. Anyway, so the Punch newspaper now displayed mm. electricity consumers lodge uh, two hundred and ninety-seven thousand eight hundred and ninety-seven complaints in six months. How did they get? Okay. That's on page 35. Now, Buhari's title, No Law, St uh, no Law States How a President Should Be Addressed, says uh, the Nigerian Bar Association. Nigerians, Nigerians back punch stand on growing lawlessness. That's on page two. I agree that it was a bold step, really. As to threaten strike, warns against salary stoppage over IPPIS. That story is on page 26. Rights abuse, we are not answerable to US. UK says, uh, UK says presidency. That's on page eight. Now, Rep. Simon Ngige, uh, others over electricity workers strike. The story is on page 11. And the big story you can see there is why Aisha moved against Shehu and others on page 2. Uh, Kabao stopped NTA from airing President's wife airport interview. Wow. And then we have a picture story here of a very sad news. Uh, that's a multiple accident yesterday at Nyanya. Uh, in Abuja. The picture is displayed there, as you can see. And then 338 million naira fraud. Courts rearrange ex-Lagos uh, speaker Iku 4G and 8 on page 40. And dramas NSA, IG disagree on Kogi and Bielsa polls on page 18. And court sacks owners uh, second in command uh, orders replacement on page 10. Now, robbery scare, Ondo Banks uh, short customers lament, that's on pages four and five. We're not going to take so much from this paper, also, again, in the interest of time, but which one do you want to intervene? Let me begin with you. Okay, I would like to speak on the NBA. Okay. Well, definitely on the, uh, the way that Punch addresses the president. Mm -hmm. In a way, no, clearly, rather clearly, they're not, like, Insult. It's not necessarily like a direct jab at the president, okay. but it's it's an implicit jab at the it's president. Implied. It, exactly, in the sense that they're basically trying to show the the clear apparent state of the country. In the sense mm -hmm. that, due to the fact the blatant disregard for the rule of law in the federal courts, mm. it's clear that that was basically a shot to the like demo, the whole idea of democracy. Mm, true, because. It's, it's just not right anywhere. Mm -hmm. it's, there should be some form of respect. At like, least. At, le at the very least, some form of respect. But the disregard just shows that it is still going back to the mm -hmm. military days. Yeah, because the questions mm. are democracy as a nation, if yeah. you say. It's a classic, mm. classic case of what's in a name. You know what I mean? If, uh, according to you, Amaka, if, the, if uh, Punch is throwing punches, the president is doing a very good job of ducking and diving, mm. if I say so myself. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I would also, also like to also look at um, the idea of, of, of us not, so, uh, from what they're saying about us not uh, answering to the UK and... Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's the president saying we, we are not yeah, so as a response almost to what, what has been going on. Mm. But uh, you have to also remember the, that famous thing that he who pays the piper mm. calls, calls the tunes. The tunes. Exactly. Right. So if, if at the point where uh, I don't know we had I don't think we moved to that story yet but there's a there's a whole story on the debt management office seeking a longer term mm -hmm. 22 billion they have a whole plan a strategy plan around uh, how they're going to clear the debt um, from the um, 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 Nigeria's debt profile through, the, through that office and their the, their long term goal and plan seeks to look at the um, U S and the U K so if it seeks to look at the U K and the U S 
and they are saying that we're not answerable to it. Mm. Where are we, where, who, who, when, I think we're just not. The discrepancy uh, is just so just, much. We can't reconcile. So, so we cannot reconcile mm. what they're saying. So yeah, yeah, we will pay the piper calls it too. I agree. You want to say something or we'll move to the last? No, I feel it's just a case of where okay. like, they don't really want to take responsibility because, you know, they don't want to... It's, it's almost a case of enjoying the lackluster state of the country that has always been. Mm. And it's not... It's, it's, it's a, they really don't want to move forward in the sense that being accountable to other foreign um, entities mm -hmm. increases the standard, but... True. It's... They want to it, it, it's just evident that they want it. to try, like she said, she, they just want to like duck and avoid mm. all of that and be like, we are, it's, a, it's our nation, it's our we're nation in we're exactly, don't come but that's interfere. not the case because the world is now becoming a global, like one yeah. in, in a sense that everybody has to like, you know, a community of all. Like, exactly. So mm. like, I feel like that's, that's the wrong approach. I agree with you. So we'll take this, uh, the last paper really very quickly. Disquieting presidency as Aisha Buhari bombs Garbashe. We won't go to that one. Uh, Senate to FD state declare emergency on unemployment. Mm -hmm. What we just talked about. Uh, wants FD to set up unemployment fund and reps ask FD to immediately fix a papa Tinkan uh, island ports and gridlock will persist without alternative trucks, uh, alternative for trucks, says Lagos. Mm -hmm. uh, blackouts looms as electricity workers shot discos and gens, which we've already talked about. About uh, U.S. seizes Nigerians, uh, private jets, global combos, Adenuga honored, and all that. Um, any one story that we can tell? Yeah, just real quickly, I just want to talk about real quickly uh, the state of our transportation in Nigeria, mm. building of the roads, the mm. idea of the fourth mainland bridge, and also knowing, taking into account that we need to sort out our ports. Mm -hmm. And that's where this um, story is coming from because yeah. of the gridlock. And, and again, I always talk about the vehicle, vehicular density in Lagos State at 200 per kilometer. So these are the things that, these are the issues that are facing us and this is why the immediacy is such, what, this is why it is such an immediate uh, mm -hmm. concern. And it's important yeah. that we take a yeah. look at it also. You want to say something or just wrap? Okay, so thank you so very much, Ajidamo and uh, Ifi, uh, for your interventions this morning. And this is where we are going to call it a wrap. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but we'll do this again tomorrow at the same time here on Plus TV Africa. The time is 8.30 a.m. every morning. I am Amaka Okoye. Have yourselves a good day.